Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. About a year ago, I did, I suppose, what they used to call the Slate Challenge. And what I did is I mixed a song entirely using Slate plugins, and it actually came out as a course. So what I decided to do was open up that same session again and see if I can tweak it a little more using a brand new plugin that they've just released. It is the FG Dynamics. And why is it interesting to all, well, to me and to all of you lovely folks? Well, that's because it is the dynamics of an SSL. Am I allowed to say that? Maybe I'm not supposed to, but I just did. Anyway, it's that style of dynamics. There you go. That's what you're supposed to say. That style of dynamics. So I'm going to open up this track and I'm going to listen to the mix and see if I can tweak it a little bit using the FG Dynamics. Before I get started, just wanted to let you know that our good friend, Adam Steele of Hot Pulse Studios, will be demonstrating how to use this plugin on one of his sessions using the DAW Reaper. All right, so here's the song. It was a song by Little Empire, and let's listen to a little bit of it. I've been hit up. So the whole song was mixed using Slate plugins. And let's see what I can improve. Start on the drums for a second. I'm going to go to the chorus. Honestly, I kind of like it. <laughs> that was mixed entirely using Slate plugins. Let me just listen to the kick in. Okay, so the kick in's a little boofy. So this is a little boofy sounding. Let's try the dynamics. I'm just going to stick it on the end. All right, so here's the compressor. What I like about SSL style compressors is they've got also again built in. They're really super smart. When I start using a compressor on my channel, I'm not sitting there trying to figure out the gain structure again. It just works. It's already working. The thing about that kick drum is there's a schnizzle ton of low end. So it means that the attack is still sneaking through just on that setting there, but it's squashing the volume, the amplitude, the main part of the signal, which of course is all the low end. So it's actually controlling some of the boofiness. Let's make sure I haven't overdone it. I'm gonna stick it back in the mix. I'm just gonna take the threshold all the way off and put it back in again. Threshold off, now back on. This seems like a good, straightforward plugin, especially for those of you that already had the, the subscription. Oh, and by the way, they're giving away three one-year subscriptions to the everything, all of the plugins. So don't forget to enter to win one of three all of the plugins subscriptions. Thank you, Slate, for letting us do that. Like I said, for me, this is going to be a good entry way for those of you that want to just get used to how SSL style dynamics work. I mean, those of us that have been able to use a real SSL or, you know, have used the plugins extensively will know there's a sound to it, which is quite special. One of those things is probably the sound of the snare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo all the elements that we're using in the snare. Turn off the verb. So I've got two sets of compression going on. And I've already got a little bit of a spankiness on it. Let's see if we can exaggerate that spankiness. Even though I've already got it on, I'm using the FG stress to do it. But let's see if I can exaggerate it some more, just for the heck of it.
So there's, if I go to super fast attack like this, it does the opposite. It's now squashing all the back end. So go onto the slow. It's exaggerating the pat, pat, pat. Probably more than I want to do. Don't like the hard knee on this. Put in the other snare. Off. On. Adding a little bit more attack. So let's see what that sounds like in the full. This is something that's really going to prove itself, whether we like it or not, inside of an actual mix. Like, does that extra attack help? On at the moment. Turn it off. Back on. Off. Back on. It's subtle. It's subtle, but I wanted to try it out in a mix. When I'm using my real SSL, what I end up doing is mixing hybrid and then the last thing in the chain is the SSL. So I'm sort of mimicking some of those things. It did increase the attack just that little bit because we've got that really far more aggressively compressed overall tone of the snare. And now we've got that sort of like very compressed, but with the attack sneaking through. Like I say, as soon as you put it onto fast attack, it was completely useless, but there it's great. So I've got this big explosion here on the top of the chorus. But if we set on a slower attack time, like we just did without going to the faster attack time, we might be able to get that, that initial hit to be a little bit more controlled and then squash the sustain a little bit. Oh, wow. I love how all this comes up as standard. Woohoo! Okay, so here it is. So I'm going to set the threshold. We're going to have to loop that section. It's, it's just a massive explosion. Here we go. Bring the threshold in. A bit less. Crank the ratio. Release time, speed it up. Go to minimum. Got a maximum. Bypass this. You definitely got that woof that it's now controlling. This is... This is cool. You got this woof on the low end. Now put it in. Initial attack, compressing the woof. Let's bring the compression down. Let's bring the... There you go. Now we're splitting the difference. On threshold, a bit more compression. Split the release time. Okay, in the track. So at the bottom here, we've got a mix control, which is always great if you want to go absolutely nuts. So why don't we find something to go nuts on? We haven't looked at bass yet. We've only got the infinity EQ at the moment on the bass sub on the overall thing. I'm not going to use anything but the FG dynamics. And we're going to have some fun with it. So. Interesting. A 
that's really compressed, but I do like how I'm hearing more transients out of it. So I actually went to fast attack. I brought the threshold down, but it's still catching it. You know, 10 dB worth of compression. Probably got the, the ratio probably around about 10 to one. Ooh, release down. Out. Back in. It's actually quite tasteful. What I wanted to do was annihilate it and then mix it back in, but I think actually we got it quite tasteful. Let's get it less tasteful. Took the hard knee off. Okay, so now it's the low end is grabbing it, it's compressing it super aggressively. So now let's take the mix control. Now we're talking. Out and in. Now I hear an improvement. So what I did is like super aggressively compressed it and it really grabbed the low end and just like shunted it down. It was the thing that was really annihilating. It was just bah. And then I brought back the mix control and rebalanced the um, output here. So this is with it on. Off. So with it on, I can bring a bit more level. Off. On. Okay, I like that. In the track. It's really kind of a fun thing to do, to be quite honest. And now I actually ended up pumping the gain up to, to put it to a level because the, the bass is actually a little bit low in the mix when it's playing back. So I'm using it to get some more gain back up again. That's kind of a fun thing to do, isn't it? Is to sort of annihilate things and then bring them back. Because, you know, with a low frequency source, like a bass guitar like that, if you're compressing it, it's going to hit the low end more aggressively, isn't it? Because that's all the sustained note. All the low end is, is what's compressing. And so the attack stuff and the bright stuff initially still coming through, but now what I've got is this really kind of sausage-like perfect kind of boom, 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 bass tone with little snippets of attack. And I'm just blending it back in. I mean, you can't really go wrong in an exercise with compressors when you've got blend knobs. Because you can go nuts and you can be silly and you can exaggerate attacks or destroy attacks, increase sustain, you know, make everything just too annihilated and then just go to the blend knob and wind it back. Have, have a go at it, grab it and just try that. Just annihilate things and then play with it. Okay, here's the lead vocal. My eyes, the battle is done and I think that you won. Don't open my eyes. Take my own hurt and save my life while I can. Don't know, been my eyes. We did quite a lot of work on the course to get that vocal quite even because when she sang this, she was quite dramatic. You know, she had really loud notes and little quiet ones, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm going to grab the same dynamics. I'm probably just going to use compression on it, but we could do the same thing. We could annihilate it a little bit and then start blending it back and see if we can get a really good, even sound on it. My eyes, the battle is done and I think that you won. Don't open my eyes and take my own hurt and save my life while I can. Don't open my eyes. To be honest, I like what it's doing straight away. Let's just see what it's like in the track. 
So if I need to push some gain on it. Bringing the output up. It's doing exactly what my SSL does for me. It's almost like the dynamics on my SSL. This is the plugin that's just going to mimic it. We'll mix and get into some really heavy detail stuff inside of the DAW and do some, you know, some DSing, EQ, some compression, and everything. And then it comes back through the channel and we just hit it again, maybe with a little bit of EQ as well, if you we want to brighten it up a little bit even more. But ultimately, it's going back through the dynamics. So, yeah, I don't want to need to do any more to that. And you don't hear the choke. There's something about an SSL compressor that I like that doesn't go <coughs> a lot of other compressors that I'm sure you can make the SSL choke, but it's harder to choke that, I think, than a lot of other outboard stuff. And I'm looking around and seeing stuff that you have to be really careful on. I love 1176s, but if you slam them too hard, you will get a choke sound. And probably worse still, if you slam a 160 VU, which is one of my favorite ever compressors ever, you hit that too hard, it will go <coughs> on those big notes. You've got to be very, very careful. SSLs are very forgiving. So now I'm going to let our very, very good friend, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios. I'm sure you know he is a, is there such a thing as a power user in Reaper? I don't know if there is. That's just one of those words, isn't it, that people use, power user. All I know is he is really freaking awesome using Reaper. He really knows his way around it. And he's a good friend, and he's now going to show us how he uses the gating features and other things, but the gating on the FG Dynamics. Over to you, Adam. Hi everybody, Adam Steele for Hot Pole Studios here, and on behalf of Produce Like a Pro, of course, I'm playing with FG Dynamics, and I am so excited to see this in Virtual Mix Rack. I've been a massive Virtual Mix Rack user since the Slate subscription began, and uh, I've used SSL desks in real life, and one thing I've always done with them is exactly what I've set here. This is on one of the vocal channels, is that before I even begin, uh, I take advantage of all the compressors and all the gates by turning them all on. Um, by default, I put the compressor at zero dB, the gate at zero dB, and turn the range up most of the way. Uh, have the ratio of the compressor three or four to one, uh, just set so it, it doesn't do much, but what it does do is I use it like a safety net on every channel. I know that there are more detailed gates, include, including one in virtual mix rack, but the, the compressor here is very forgiving uh, and the gate is rather natural, the fall off on it. I usually have the release almost around a second so that if there is some kind of background noise, it gently fades away and doesn't just cut out of the track, which can be quite jarring. Uh, so I use this more as a catch-all and so on every vocal I tend to have this and on this track this is Three Years Time by Mayseto and this is a very busy mix at times and I actually have the FG Dynamics on the guitars, the bass, uh, the snare, the overheads, every vocal um, because that is kind of how I would run it and it doesn't do much but what it does do is the tiny little things. So it's a very busy mix, and this particular vocal, let's solo this one. Uh, this is a really good example of, let's say that I have to put a mix together really fast and I don't have the time to do super trimmed editing, which of course in modern production is something we do, but let's say this was the kind of mix where you wanted it to be more natural rather than heavy gating. There's a big section here that you can see where there's a lot of background noise. Now if I turn off the dynamics, listen to this, you'll hear background noise. All of these promises It's over uh, Now, what you're hearing there, of course, is all the headphone noise bleed because uh, this particular singer had his headphones absolutely correct. And just turning on FG Dynamics, this will gently fade away. All of these promises 
gone. Nice and simple. And that's the kind of thing where if things are rather clean, let's say maybe you've got an ensemble going on and you've got loads of you in the same room, you could have this very gently expanding or gating and taking things out that aren't supposed to be there very kind of naturally and behaving like an auto mixer. That is exactly the kind of way that I would use this. Uh, the compressors can be used quite heavily, but I personally don't. I like to use them as a kind of a catch-all for the, the extra little bits. Uh, I've got one going on on the overheads. Uh, so here we are with the hard knee and a lot more than usual compression. This is on the overheads. And just turning that off. Then. So when I turn that on, you can see I have the LA-2A here going quite crazy, but afterwards I have the FG Dynamics with the, uh, the FGS, which is providing a tiny bit of uh, EQ and a lot of high pass filtering. Uh, but this is but just with a little bit of a makeup gain there, it's dipping 6 dB out on the heavy bits and we're only boosting three back, but it adds a certain thickness to the overheads that I can do on pretty much every channel and it will just give me that lovely velvety thing that the SSL 4000 series desk is known for. So there you go. Thank you. Back to you. I hope you enjoyed Adam and mine's video. That was a lot of fun to do. And don't forget, you can win one of three one-year subscriptions to the whole of the Slate plugin family. So enter to win that. And thanks ever so much for watching. And um, yeah, check out the course. I'm sure there'll be a link for the course as well down below. So long, farewell, au revoir, adios, goodbye. Hey, do. Au revoir, au revoir, dos vidania, goodbye.